First is a student organization that uh, a few of us came together last year to create, um, really looking for a space for first generation students and low income students to find community, to find a safe space to discuss the issues that are very near and dear to our hearts. We created this group for uh, to connect with alumni, to learn about their experience, learn about how they over overcame some of the challenges that we're going through now. And more importantly, perhaps mentorship. That's something that I, I struggle with a lot, uh, I think, in undergrad, also when I was applying to Princeton. I was born and raised in, in Bangladesh. I never really thought about being a first gen and how it could play a role being a student at an elite institution. Um, my instinct was to just hide and, and not talk about it all the time. One of the main things that we want to do with FIRST is reclaim some of the negative perception or the, the, the idea that coming from a background of being low income or a first generation college is, is, is something negative. And that's part of the reason why we chose the name first, because we're all very proud of, of who we are, of, of where we came from. In think general discourse, sometimes it's difficult because it's not framed that way. It's talked about in, in a way that doesn't make it affirming. Coming from Nicaragua originally, growing up in neighborhoods in, in Texas where there's still a lot of challenges, we are all better policymakers if we are able to bring in experiences from our own backgrounds or, or backgrounds of, of somebody that, that we know to inform how that policy is developed and, and implemented. When I was growing up, my family went through a series of financial struggles that made it difficult for me and my sister to afford school. And I started to connect the dots between our own struggles and this larger structure that was affecting me and my peers. Diverse perspectives, um, not just by race, but by all different identities and experiences matter because it does actually impact outcomes. I want people to walk into this university, to walk into Robertson Hall and not feel the imposter syndrome that I felt and so many others before me have also felt and so many others in my class I think also feel. And it, it's complicated because that imposter syndrome comes from growing up always having to fight against the odds. And so my hope is that when students like me come to this university, they have the resources, the peer network of people who are like them, an alumni network of people who've come before them, all letting them know that they deserve to be here. Growing up in Puerto Rico and seeing the many challenges that the island is facing, I saw how a lot of families, lower middle income families in Puerto Rico were struggling, um, including my family. Having a first in the classroom is uh, really, really important, um, particularly when we're having discussions about welfare or poverty. Um, having a perspective from an individual who comes from a background that we're seeking kind of to affect in some way with a policy that we're proposing is important because I think it's easy to think of different groups of people as kind of just segments of the population as these abstract actors um, that don't you know have any real life consequences. I also hope that Woodrow Wilson School professors recognize that they have first generation or low-income students in their classes. Um, at times it feels that the professors don't realize who's among the cohort that they're teaching. I think it's important for this group to be institutionalized so that students don't have to find each other organically that might take months like it did for my cohort but to come to the Wilson School school already knowing uh, who might identify with uh, certain family challenges that uh, they may have had or income issues that they may have had growing up or even currently face and so that those students can support each other going forward but equally importantly it's important for this group to be institutionalized so that they can connect with alumni who are also first generation or who came from low income backgrounds uh, especially because a lot of times students from these backgrounds might not have a a very large network of professional people um, within their families that they can get mentorship or advice from. When we're in these kinds of environments, where in, you know the professor is, is laying out a particular framework for how to solve a policy issue that involves poor and low-income um, people or people that are coming from low-educated family backgrounds, we obviously add a very intimate understanding of how these policies are going to be implemented, whether or not they're going to be effective, um, whether or not they're really even addressing the root of the problem. Our experiences are 
not even necessarily unique. A lot of America, a lot of the world experiences a lot of inequality. And I think if we had more of us at the policy making table, then um, we would make policies that help more individuals uh, in a more nuanced and, and kind of all-encompassing way. Well, to be honest, in the beginning I was a little bit scared when I was admitted to Princeton and when I came here because it was a whole new world for me. It was the first time I was leaving my country, the first time I was speaking in a different language, and I was assuming that everyone was going to be extremely different uh, to me. But uh, fortunately, it wasn't the case. And in the second year, and almost uh, when I'm uh, about to graduate, I also realized that there is a group of people who had similar experiences to my experience, not just in terms of their lives, but also in terms of their um, personal experiences. And I think uh, I realized that it's possible to build a network of uh, support. If this group had existed in my first year, it would have been so much more easier for me to navigate through these things. and. I would have probably spent more time on gaining more from the institution than on trying to figure out my personal struggles and uh, so these are all avoidable things, these are things that people can collectively push through. Having found this community I just feel like I've foundly found, like I've found my people you know, like they just get me. I think the one thing we share in common is that we wish that first was in existence from our first day here at the Woodrow Wilson School. First generation and low income students who are in public policy school may be some of the people who are best positioned to make people-centered public policy, to think about how we make more equitable and just and fair public policy. I used to tell people that my goal was to take Dundalk to the Ivy League. You know, when people hear Dundalk, it's something that's largely synonymous in my community with white trash. And so I was really excited to know that I would have the chance to come here. There's also a lot of pressure because you come here and feel like you really have to represent. You have to represent for your city. You have to represent for your country in some cases. Looking forward, what I envision are for students from first generation and low income backgrounds to just feel affirmed and feel supported at their foundation and their core, not just by their peers and classmates, but by the faculty and staff. I think that a lot of the difficulties that I faced um, at the undergraduate level quickly re-emerged and resurfaced as soon as I stepped foot on Princeton's campus. From the perspective of the first-gen student, it can actually feel like your life is on the line, especially when you have so much at stake, when you have you know, what could be your entire family counting on your success um, as a path to a better life. One of the best ways to support us is by first acknowledging the bravery and resilience that was required of us to be the first to make it to college or graduate school, as well as the talent and determination required of us to stay in school and graduate alongside our peers who in many respects had a head start on the race. My name is Amber Forbes and I'm a first. My name is Joelle Gamble and I am a first. My name is Edwin Coleman, and I am a first. My name is Stephanie Mavronis, and I am a first. My name is Ileana Cruz, and I am a first. My name is Licky Flingai, and I am a first. My name is Millie Burgess, and I'm a first. Hi, my name is Martin De Simone, and I'm a first. My name is Karina Edward, and I'm a first. My name is Aya Saeed, and I'm a first. My name is Kazi Rashid, I'm a first. My name is Marcelo Norsworthy, and I am a first.